Last week, an unholy monster escaped from the depths of Tartarus. And he landed on Fox News. The comedy stylings of Greg Gutfield are now unleashed upon the world. And since we had to watch his first episode, so do you. Now it's time for OK Stop. You know how it works. We'll roll the clip wherever we feel like it. Emily and I will stop the clip to comment. And we have to we have to have a comment. We can't just stop it because we don't want to hear it anymore. <laughs> that yeah, I mean you can you can have no comment. Now, just for everyone listening, you know, this is the first episode of Gutfield and uh, Emily and I were just discussing this uh, before we started that um it's nice to let a couple Gutfields build up in the DVR so you don't feel like when you get to the end of a Gutfield you're like have to wait a whole whole other day. To find out what happened There have next. been other episodes since then, but we haven't caught up with them because we're kind of saving them for an end-of-the-week treat. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Let's roll the clip. If you've been watching the GG show on Saturdays, welcome. If you love the five and felt the need for more GG, that's awesome. If you ended up here because you thought your TV was the microwave oven, it's good to see you, Mr. President. <laughs> Your pizza will be warm in two minutes. And Hunter, he brought the extra cheese. Okay, stop. Okay, stop. <laughs> so. Should we unpack a few things <laughs> that just happened? <laughs> let's take the roller bag that is that joke. Let's put it on. Let's put it on the, on the, on the edge of the bed. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so first of all, let's just move. I don't know where the GG thing is. I mean, we're going to let him have that. Oh, GG stands for great grandma. <laughs> at least that's so, what it stands for in my family uh, and when he yeah. says it that's all i'm thinking about <laughs> so he's saying ha, joe biden has senility and thinks that the greg gutfield show is is a microwave making a pizza yeah but it seems like they're it is also producing a pizza because yeah he's saying your pizza will be ready soon in the world of the joke, is there going to be a pizza in two minutes? <laughs> also, can we talk about the fact that, like, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm 100 percent positive that Fox News has definitely probably already criticized Biden for spending too much money in office. <laughs> There's no way the picture they're painting of him as like a man who has to microwave his own pizza is in line with the image they're trying to paint of him as the president. Like, to me, this is way more like down home of an image than anyone else. Is Hunter bringing drugs? Is that what the cheese is? Is cheese drugs? I'm assuming he's not referencing like a real slang, right? Is it like... The, the possibilities are uh, cheese is a slang for a kind of drug or a like combo a, like of drugs. Like a Parmesan cocaine or something? Yeah, yeah. Or maybe, yeah, I guess. Unless you want, you know, in a, in a, in a what do you call it? A Asiago because you want something a bit more mild. Or <laughs> it's a reference to the fact that Hunter apparently said in some interview that he would snort anything including Parmesan cheese. I think that's too esoteric. And the other is just, I, I think what it really is, is just Hunter Biden is funny to us. Yeah, I really think that's what it is. It's like it has the cadence of a of a joke about Hunter Biden being a fuck up. Yeah. But again, in the world of the joke, he's saying that Joe Biden is so senile that he tried to put a pizza in a microwave and accidentally turned on this show. But his son is on his way over. I suppose the best, most generous interpretation is rather than upset Joe Biden by telling him the truth that this is a television program and not a microwave currently making for him a pizza. He's like continuing the story to kind of keep yeah. Joe Biden calm. Which, okay, I mean, I, that is a very generous interpretation of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a, there, there, was a, there was a lot that we just sat through and none of it was a joke. <laughs> As for those late night shows we're supposed to compete against, why bother? Who do they offend? The only time Stephen Colbert ruffles feathers is in a pillow fight. Okay, stop. Who do they offend? You. You're obviously offended. <laughs> like, offending someone is not uh, the mark of good comedy, but also, like, you're clearly upset. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> a pillow fight. Yeah, ruffle feathers, pillow fight. Pillows have made of feathers. 
it's like they know what the shape of a joke is supposed to be, but yeah. they don't know why the pieces go where they do. They're joke shaped. They're they have joke cadence, but they're not jokes. And then the larger point he's making is so like weak and facile. It's like yeah, they're they're you don't agree with them. They they have a different point of view than you. And and I guess the point he's making is ostensibly uh, these left of center late night hosts don't take the risk because the real risk is doing what I'm doing, right. which is having a right wing point of view on Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> this very dangerous act of assailing cancel culture, of right. of criticizing Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. There's no space for that anywhere except here the place that I have been for years and have been saying exactly what I'm saying now at other times of day. He is uh-huh. right in the sense that Greg Gutfield has never hosted a show at 11 p.m. to say these things. He's only been able to do that at other time slots. <sighs> All right, well, let's keep getting through this. The definition of risk to Kimmel is dehydration from crying too much. He cried once. (laughs) And I heard Seth Meyers and Trevor Noah ran off to be obscure together. What? (laughs) I I don't know. I don't know. I do like what comes next, though. I like this kind of, um, what comes next is a kind of um, performative breeziness. Like, we don't even give a fuck. Emily, we should just declare right now that this is too much attention on this. We are shining too bright a light on this boring, inoffensive, non-memorable attempt. And we do not plan to do this frequently, but I do think it's worth, because (laughs) this is the first one, the one you put the most work in, to unpack (laughs) the argument that he's making. So he's now said, the problem with these late night comics is they aren't offensive enough. They don't ruffle feathers. They're too, they don't take enough risks. They're both too broad and too obscure. Right. They got the market cornered in calling Americans stupid. I just found out about this today. Okay, stop. I just want to, I do want to pause on that, which is that like, he has to twist it, right? Because you, you would be hard pressed to find a moment where Stephen Colbert calls anyone who's a non-prominent person stupid. It would never happen. It doesn't happen. Greg can't just critique the, the, the late night shows for targeting Republicans in power. He has to pretend they're targeting the viewers because the only way you can do a late night comedy show with a conservative point of view is figuring out some conception of right wing talk in which they are not defending the most powerful and ensconced interests in American society. And so there has to be some aggrieved put upon downtrodden viewer attacked so mercilessly by Jimmy Fallon. (laughs) And like, okay, I feel attacked by Jimmy Fallon, but not for the reasons that Greg Gutfeld lies out. (laughs) Uh, But also it's like, I'm getting so much whiplash here because he's like, these guys don't offend anyone. And he's like, but they're calling you stupid. (laughs) Right, right. Seems like they're offending you, no? Right? That's as you said. Yeah, like not only are they offending you, Greg Gutfeld, but you're you're saying that we already hate them because they call us stupid. So they do offend all, actually a lot of people. You're saying they offend all of America. <laughs> Let's keep rolling it. Rob Manfred, uh, the MLB commissioner, said that the best way to demonstrate our values as a sport is by relocating this year's All Star Game and the draft. Demonstrate our values as a sport. Clearly, these cowards got spooked by activists manipulating the media. Because how is voter ID immoral? Try picking up nail polish remover in West Virginia without one. Don't ask me how I know. Okay, stop. That was a joke. Okay, I'd like to ask him how he knows. (laughs) No, you're not. No, Emily. No, you can't ask him how he knows. He said specifically. He wouldn't have said it if you were going to ask him. He said don't ask him how he knows. You don't need an ID to buy a... Nail polish remover. Right? I, I, I'm not. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I'm not. This is the only time I've heard about it. But also, what's embarrassing about buying nail polish remover? Like, is the joke that he wears nail polish? Because like, wouldn't removing it be the most manly thing you could do? <laughs> I guess we assume that in the world of the joke, uh, he doesn't want people to know that he has he puts nail polish on, and then at some point later, right before takes the it show, off. right before the show. 
that he puts on nail polish. That basically what, what Greg Gutfield is saying here is that like I, Greg Gutfield, have a deep um, part of myself that is quite feminine. And when mm-hmm. I'm not on the air, I explore in all kinds of ways. One of the ways is by putting on nail polish. And, and that's something that makes me feel more alive, more like myself, more like my true <laughs> self. But I'm not ready to have that conversation on Fox News with all of you. Uh, and right. so I actually often, especially when I'm traveling West Virginia, like realize, oh, I forgot my nail polish remover, but I need to have it because I can't have people see this feminine aspect of my personality, that the, the gender binary is not just not just something that is sort of central <laughs> to how I see myself. It's central to how you see the world. And that's too important to me, like to keep my relationship with you, the viewer, unsullied by an understanding that I have a more expansive conception of what it means to be a man. And so when I was in West Virginia recently, I bought nail polish remover. I had to show an ID. I was like, huh, I can use that in the show. Got to take the nail polish off first, but I can use that in the show. And maybe if I just tell people, like, don't ask me about it, I kind of get away with it because I think it's a really good example of what I'm talking about. But again, I don't want to really get into some of the more um, uh, uh, feminine aspects of my of my true self. And I think the audience understood that. And remember, the all-star voting process allows fans to vote five times over a 24-hour period. That's ballot stuffing, or in Chicago, election day. Okay, stop. That's just a classic joke, right? Chicago, you know, Chicago elections from the past. You know, that's a big thing for them. You know, people vote. Too many people are voting. Um, Dead people are voting. Chicago machine politics, just sort of a classic. Yeah. They hate Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Because of uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones, he didn't think her performance was very good. <laughs> she was miscast. <laughs> um. MLB lecturing us on values is like me lecturing you on height. Meanwhile, the president, the president calls the bill Jim Crow on steroids. Yeah, the so-called great unifier now flinging racial discord like frisbees at a fish show. They have frisbee there. <laughs> you stupid execs are cowards and bad golfers. Okay, stop. This is where we get into the kind of lyrical writing that's the core of the argument, right? Like he's not a corporatist. He's anti-corporate. He's got yeah. he's got point. They play golf and they cheat on their spouses famously. That's what people do at Delta. <laughs> I what I love about this too is that he's like so comfortable with the fact that like Fox News has no real sponsors anymore. They are only on the air because of a bunch of weird like backroom like cable packaging deals. <laughs> they don't have corporate support anymore. And so he can just very comfortably say like, yeah, fuck <laughs> fuck Coca-Cola. Well, it's fuck it's Delta. also just sort of like- it's just sort of like, yeah, like, yeah, man, totally like corporations, you know, it's just sort of like, uh, yeah, I don't I don't think Delta is inherently good because they sided <laughs> with Democrats on this issue. Same for Coca-Cola. Love the product, <laughs> love the product that they produce. Um, but but it's like, yeah, they're self-interested. And the thing that they don't want to grapple with at Fox News is. What does it mean that corporations have decided it is in their self-interest, their amoral mercenary bottom line self-interest to take this position and i i think the reality is this that that corporations um have to deal with the electorate as it exists not as it is gerrymandered uh carefully located in rural states uh in the electoral college and they view their they, they, they view it as in their financial interest to take this side. And I think that is what's terrifying. And that's what they can't grapple with. Yeah, they can't gerrymander support for like Diet Coke versus Dr. Pepper. Like <laughs> <laughs> we're all buying the same stuff and we outnumber them. <laughs> yeah. I hope Dems raise the corporate tax to 99%, except on Fox, which should be tax exempt. Just one little joke about the, 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 about, about the boss. Maybe I'm turning socialist, but after years of proclaiming corporations as engines of free markets, I realize they're locomotives run by meth heads who'll do anything to save their own hides. It's Both profit so over people, true. no matter how many inclusion That's coordinators they Great. hire. A locomotive run by a meth head trying to save their own hide. I just am having a really hard time with that mental image. It could be a water buffalo. It could be a, a water buffalo on meth trying to Is protect its Is that a type of hide. locomotive? 
No, it's a type of hide. Oh. I'm saying that the meth head is driving the train. The meth head is trying to protect its hide. Right. I just don't understand what scenario uh, he's concocted where, like, there's a way that the meth head could drive the train that would save him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who who's being pursued? Like, who's pursuing this meth head? And how did he get in charge of a train? And I'm sorry. I'm just a professional storyteller, and I'm really grappling with how to work backwards from this climactic act three (laughs) (laughs) to make this, like, an emotionally fulfilling story that, you know, really, like, you know, caps off the hero's journey. I just don't know how it works. I feel like we might need to go back to the outline stage. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) Well, it's time to return the favor. That's our job, to scare the people who delight in scaring you. Sort of like an enforcer on a hockey team. But cuter. I don't think it's worth engaging with Greg Gutfield's material as much as we have. But I do think it's worth engaging with this argument that, like, it, we need a show that's going to scare corporations because they're trying to scare you. But Delta and Coca-Cola are not trying to scare anybody. No. They're, they're not. They're scared of all the time. That's what they're. They're skittish corporations trying to figure out how to get out of the pressure they're under. Be- right. for using or not using the clout that they have in a really important state. And, okay, I know we're, like, preaching to the choir here. Like, obviously, everything people say on Fox News is, like, the height of hypocrisy. Like, obviously, Fox News has way more invested in people being scared than anyone else. This entire monologue was just him trying to scare his audience about what's happening in America. I'm not breaking any news here i'm not making some sort of unbelievable point that none of you could have thought of by saying that but what i am saying is that like let's say we buy into the premise that like he has a problem with corporations scaring people and he thinks the answer to that is to also scare them like what kind of fucking halloween prank war does he think (laughs) this is I think that, like, what's interesting to me about it and why I do think it's worth looking at it once and one time only um, is uh, it's a really desperate argument. It's, it's, a, it's a there's a it's 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 sweaty. It's really sweaty. Right. The jokes are bad. Fine. The jokes are bad. They don't have good joke writers. Why don't they have good joke writers? Because liberals won't work for Fox News. Even the conservatives <laughs> who think they're liberals because they live in cities and like restaurants with small plates and have gay friends but are actually conservative in every kind of instinct that they have, but it's confusing to them because they hate Trump and they do vote for Democrats, you know? And then they watch Netflix specials where (laughs) there's a joke about how if you could be trans, could you be a monkey? Uh, Like, even those people won't work for Fox News. So you're really restricted to kind of truly self-identified conservatives right now at a time in which being a young person who identifies as conservative means identifying as being in basically an enemy of the culture. Um, yeah. So that's so the jokes are bad. But the thing is, there is plenty of conservative comedy all over the place. That like the problem isn't that there is no conservative voice in comedy. I also think like a lot of the joke structure that Gutfeld is aiming for is very Dennis Miller. And Dennis Miller is a conservative. And his jokes, they're not good, but they make sense. He can't even get the Dennis Miller structure right. There was a joke that we didn't even hear in this clip where he goes like, the baseball players are on so many steroids that they give the Goodyear blimp a complex like they're because their heads are so big. And it's mm-hmm. like, that's a Dennis Miller structure of like, it just this, needs like a this babe. looks like that. <laughs> but when I thought about it, it was like, OK, so he's saying that the baseball players heads are so big that the Goodyear blimp has a complex, which means it feels insecure about how about not being big enough or not. Like, is that is that what you that's not what you mean when you say someone has a complex. Right. I, it just is, it's, uh, they got the big heads from the steroids. It's joke areas. It's, it's joke, joke areas. areas. This is a show that could only ever premiere during a pandemic when there's a good explanation for why no one's laughing in the in the live audience. <laughs> like, if this had premiered with, like, a full studio audience, I just don't know how they cobbled the edit together. I mean, they're, they'd have to, they'd have to sweeten juicing, it. They gotta sweeten it up. Yeah. They gotta sweeten it. You gotta sweeten uh, the laughs. I'm glad we did this. Uh, 
for those listening at home, I just want you to understand that uh, Emily and I spent a great deal of time walking through the Greg Gutfield clip. And for your benefit, I'm suggesting we edit it down to the best parts <laughs> so that you don't have to <laughs> endure the amount of Gutfield that we just endured. That's something that we're doing yes. as a gift to you. Yeah. And that's okay. Stop. <laughs>